In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the design, construction, and usage of my DIY solar-powered pressurized rooftop water heater and shower. I've been looking for a portable hot water heater for traveling and camping for quite some time. I looked at both the solar-powered gravity-fed bag systems as well as the propane-powered systems. However, the solutions were either inadequate, took too long to heat, too expensive, or too bulky. I discovered one solution online that used an aluminum tank mounted to roof racks. It was pressurized using an air compressor. This looked ideal, however the cost was $300 plus $60 for shipping plus $20 import duty and taxes. This would have been around $500 Canadian. But it did give me an idea for a DIY project that could be as good or better for a fraction of the price. Doing some research, I discovered that it would be possible to make a solar heater out of cell core ABS pipe. The question was what diameter and what length would produce sufficient surface area and capacity to make it worthwhile. Once I gathered the ABS drain pipe specifications, I entered that data into a spreadsheet where I could evaluate the length, weight, surface area, and capacity of various diameters of common ABS pipe. I decided on 4 inch pipe 6 feet long, which would give me the capacity of 15 liters or 4 US gallons. All the parts required are available from your local home center garden supply or automotive parts retailer. I started by installing the shutoff valve. I wanted the drain to be as low as possible in the pipe to avoid the necessity of having to tilt the system. To ensure the valve retaining nut did not interfere with the pipe once it was glued in, I positioned the nut away from the wall of the cap using a bolt, which is the same thickness as the wall of the pipe. I then inserted a Forstner bit into the nut, creating a center mark for the drill. Once drilled through, I threaded the shutoff into place and attached the retaining nut. For an inflation valve, I was originally going to use a simple rubber Schrader valve. However, I opted for a longer valve that is used on aluminum tire rims. This valve uses threaded nuts to secure it in place, which I felt was a much better system. I drilled out a 2-inch threaded cap and tapped in a radiator valve drain plug I picked up at the local automotive parts store. This valve will allow me to release pressure from the tank should that be necessary without opening the drain shutoff. To install the filler, I first determined the diameter of the fitting and then drilled out the opening on the drill press using a 2 and 3 8 inch hole saw. I now glued the fitting in place using ABS solvent cement and then glued on both end caps. As a final step to improve the thermal absorption of solar energy, I painted the surface with flat black paint. First, I lightly buffed all the ABS surfaces with steel wool soaked in methyl hydrate. Then applied one coat of spray primer followed by two coats of flat black paint. To mount the shower to the roof racks, I wanted something easy to assemble and disassemble and did not involve any metal U-bolts or worm clamps. At the local outdoor equipment store, I found rooftop canoe pads for just over $4 a piece. These pads have a slot in them that is meant to go over the gunnels of a canoe and then the solid block would sit on top of your roof with the canoe upside down. However, the slot is very close to the size and shape of my cross rails on my existing roof rack. I discovered that I could extend the slots on the foam blocks by actually drilling them on the drill press. I then opened the gap by simply cutting off the foam with a hacksaw. To cradle a pipe, I marked out an arc on the foam block equal to the outside diameter of the pipe and positioned it such that it left half an inch of foam between the mounting slot and the bottom of the arc. I copied this arc to both sides. Then I carefully cut out this section of foam by hand using a coping saw while being careful that my saw blade followed the pattern on both sides of the block. To attach the shower to the support pads, I used 1 inch nylon tie down straps. With both these pads in place, the heater is securely attached to the roof and will not shift even with heavy braking of the truck. To test it out, we filled with 30 liters of cold water from the Green River here in Whistler, BC, where the water temperature is 4 or 5 degrees. Driving around the truck in the mixed sun and cloud all day, we now check the temperature of the heater. After sitting in the shade for about half an hour, it reached 31 degrees. The air temperature is 26 degrees. Inside the tank, we see the water temperature is 34 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. This is certainly warm enough for a couple of long showers and a very comfortable temperature considering the alternative is the river. I found an inexpensive 25 foot long coiled 3 8 inch hose at the local garden center. This would be perfect as it's easily stored and I would not require a larger diameter. We found a multifunction spray nozzle for under $5 that would provide a shower and jet stream capability. Now I hook up the compressor to the battery and turn it on. 
The bursting point of 6 inch ABS pipe is well over 100 psi. As such, I determined that 30 psi would provide a safe and ample pressure for our purpose without any long term expansion fatigue to the pipe or glued connections. It was an easy and inexpensive project that required minimal tools and just some basic plumbing parts. I know this is going to come in handy on all our future travels and camping trips.